Hi, right, welcome back everyone and welcome to my house plant tour. Welcome back. Um, this is my house plant tour. Um, I'm going to start off in the bedroom. <clears throat> Up here we have Hoya Matildi. I've been growing this plant for three years now. It's full of peduncles, as you can see. Grows in the sunny south facing window as you can see here it's got this wreath this to help to support its growth I love this plant for its neat looking silvery speckles shimmering speckles on the leaves next up is my Hoya Crimson Queen. I lost this whole plant about a year ago or so. Took three cuttings, started it off again. Taught me a few things about how to grow Hoyas. I'm doing much better with them now. Puts out some nice growth, hasn't flowered for me yet. But I grow it for its beautiful, beautiful variegated leaves, mainly. Next up is, we all know this one. This is one of my Hoya Bellas. Okay, check out how long those branches are. successfully growing them now. I have the neck. And down on the bottom there is a sun catcher. I love Hoya Bella for its beautiful fragrant flowers. Long pendulous hanging stems of leaves. It's just magnificent. Hangs in this window here too. Next is my Hoya Cutisii. It puts out growth, which is what you see here. Sometimes it doesn't grow at all, but I'm hopeful. I don't try to hurry it up. I always wait for the new growth to come and then I know it needs a little bit more water.
Next up is my Philodendron Brazil. One of my favorites. I love it for its variegated leaves. And this one has gone wild. So it's hanging right down like this. In the winter time, it won't look so good because we get really cold winters. At that time, I'll give it a repot. Mainly I enjoy it for its wild jungle look. This one has truly become big, big and luscious. Try not to water it too much in the winter. Next up, Hoya Sunrise. I'm going to say that this is my favorite Hoya. It's beautiful. Red, reddish green leaves with these venations. I've got the nectar growing these too. It took me a few years reading up, watching about other people, how they grow theirs. Taught me a lot about how to grow mine. I have it in a cash pot. It's because I put a little bit of water in, let it drink it before I give it more. And I love this Hoya for its beautiful fragrant flowers. and it's magnificent color. Next up, Serapegia woodii, or Chain of Hearts. I gave it a repot in early spring. It rewarded me with all this growth. It looks magnificent. Not watering it so much now because the much cooler weather. When I do, I just give it a sparing, sparingly, just a little water. Next up is my Fairy Castle Cactus. <clears throat> This one stays inside all summer or winter, never take it out. That's magnificent in the sunny window. It's put on a lot of growth, also I've repotted it. I love this cactus for its neat compact growth. It has a lot of appeal to me. Love to see it every day growing in the window here. I try not to let it dry out too much when the top layer of soil is starting to get dry during the summer. I'll give it another water. I'm more cautious about watering in the winter, so every two weeks I give it some water. Next up is sorry about this yellow sticky paper here it's to help to get rid of fungus gnats so I cut little pieces off does a good job this is Hoya Carnosa Hindu rope it loves this window it's been growing really well in here as you can see it has these two big peduncles which it flowers from. And it'll be making more. It's put out a lot of growth, although I have to look back on old photos to even notice how much it has grown because as a plant parent, I look at my plants so much, I don't even notice how much growth it's doing. But it is growing a lot. 
I keep it in this cash pot too. Then inside the cash pot, I have pumice, big pumice stones to catch up any excess water when I do water it so that it has nice free drainage, good aeration around the roots. And next, this is my Peperomia Hope. And to tell you a nice story, I rooted it as a cutting into this little tiny, small four inch pot. It's about a four inch pot. It's also in a cash pot too. I haven't since repotted it at all. This is what it's done over the last three or four years. It has grown and grown and grown. I love this plant for its round, fat, succulent leaves and its pendulous growth, which makes any living space have that jungle, of jungle appeal. Next, we're going to have a look into the next bedroom, so follow me. Next are my Phalaenopsis. I love Phalaenopsis. And this one has all this magnificent new root growth. It's important to let them dry out somewhat before you water them again I soak them I put them in a big bucket and soak those roots with green tea and a little white vinegar to keep the pH down to 5.5 this one has a bud making a bed now. It's right here. Phalaenopsis are very happy to be a plant that grows in your home. They grow very successfully, much more successfully than I ever imagined. This one has a flower spike coming up too. It's going to have beautiful purple and white harlequin flowers. This one has flowers that are just out of this world. And this one here, which is a rescue orchid. And finally it's growing great and healthy. This so has a flower spike coming up and it is now autumn. This one I rescued. I rescued from myself because I was a, not a very good plant parent at the time, not knowing how much water to give my phalaenopsis. I overwatered it and I rotted the root system. And luckily I have managed to save it because it is my favorite. And now it is growing much better. It's taken six months to even start to grow a root system again. It's starting to push out a new leaf. I'm going to do an update video on how to care for Phalaenopsis again. This is a Dracaena, Dracaena. Um, I love this for its crinkling, crinkly green leaves and eventually it gets a nice long stem. It's very easy to look after. My sense of area moonshine. My sense of area moonshine. A little bit more sensitive to overwatering. 
so I would be careful not to water it too much during the very humid weather and I mean humid I mean over 85 percent but if you live in a dry area you have those dry summers rot's not much of an issue I love the sense of area for its beautiful white shiny new leaves which gives it its name moonshine because it looks like a nice shiny moon of course it's not as pronounced as it once was because it's starting to grow up and mature hi welcome to the next bedroom and this is not mine it's my son's but I asked him if I could use it and he said yes I can use this window and this is what it has. Welcome to my son's bedroom. There's a lot of beautiful plants growing here. First I'd like you to have a look at this. Let me just take it out. Everybody, I guess, has a spider plant in their home. They've been growing this for about a couple of years now. Has become this magnificent specimen. At first when I was growing it I wasn't too good at knowing how to get things right but now I have. It's showing how happy it is by growing these babies. What I really want to do is to buy a nice table so I can put it on top so you can hang grow even more babies. I love this plant for its easy care, its beautiful variegation, and it's just got that jungle feel to it, those jungle vibes which I really enjoy. Next up, you could call this a rescue plant. In Japan, Phalaenopsis are often bought when a new business is being arranged or started. And when it opens on the opening day, <clears throat> they have white Phalaenopsis. Of course, a lot of them end up trash or thrown out because nobody knows how to care for them or they don't have the space. And this one is a rescue because this one after flowering is going to be thrown out or we'll put outside and of course the weather isn't always favorable or the conditions so I have rescued it it is potted up in sphagnum moss it's been growing in here for the last year put out magnificent new growth it's such a big pot that I have to be careful watering it. It has to dry out 
between waterings, but not bone dry. Before I give it the next, I'll just put out these new, beautiful, big new leaves. It has some edema. This was because it had a hard time before I got it. And these are the new leaves, which is telling me it's living a happy life. And I'm looking forward to when it shows me its flowers. I'm happy with its new growth. The Phalaenopsis are actually not too hard to look after if you know how. Of course I have a video about it. I'll be making more videos soon. Next up we have the Spermathophyllum or Peace Lily Domino. I love this peace lily for its amazing variegation, ease of care. Every leaf has unique characteristics. No one leaf is the same as the next, which makes it have this amazing appeal. You can have typical green almost completely white variegated or light green and dark green variegation it had a hard time during the summer because summer hairs get truly hot unbearably hot it showed its disapproval of the weather by getting a lot of brown tips some of the leaves were half brown. I know that it was a heat stress related because now it's put out all this new luscious growth which tells me that the problem was heat. It wasn't the watering I was doing or anything, it was just stress from the heat. But don't panic and don't worry, when your plants are heat stressed just take care with the watering, try not to push them too much. They will get through it and then you'll get rewarded with new growth. It's just part of the natural life cycle of plants. This is a favorite of mine. I bought it about, I think a year ago now. Next up is a pothos, a lime green variety. Soon you'll see the parent plant. I took about eight or ten cuttings and planted them up in here. It has since put out a lot of new growth. The leaves are kind of a little bit too pale, so I gave it a little fertilizer to help it get along. I love pothos, and so do you, and so does everybody. And why do we love it? Because of its beautiful bright greens, light greens, variegations, ease of care, it's a magnificent plant. Okay, the next one is Masoni, 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 Serapegia in my head. Sensivaria masonia. Whale stems. I had to pick this up so I, I could show you just how big this thing is. And as it grows, it's more monst monstrous. So let's put out this leaf. This leaf, I mean. I can row a boat with it. It's huge. This is the previous years. It's very hard to see that it's in here. This one. It's there. It's bigger than my hand. 
This is a very thirsty sense of area, so during the summertime it appreciates water when it gets dry. During the winter, I cut down on watering quite a bit, but I don't stop altogether. I do give it a bit of water every month. I love this plant. I think it's an eye catcher. Gives your home that jungle feel. It's very easy to care for. I've had this plant for about three years, I think, three years. Next up is my pothos. Ready? I've been growing this on a moss pole for about a year now. Light there. It is growing steady and well, and as it's growing, the leaves have gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. Some of these leaves are as big as my hand. Extended this pole. I'll take you up so you can get a good view of the sleeve. These leaves are getting big. I extended my pole so that it can grow even more. Six feet now. The plant itself is going to get to five foot. The stems are getting thicker and thicker as it grows up. And of course, the roots, they're getting bigger and bigger too as it supports itself making its way up this moss, moss pole. I have all this extra growth that grows off. I take cuttings and give them away to friends because I really want the main stem here to get all the maximum amount of nutrition, light and energy to produce the big beautiful leaves. I'm really impressed by how well it's grown. Much better than I ever thought. I don't really water this moss too much. I water it every one or two weeks. The plant seems to be doing fine. This is my pride and joy. Pathos.
welcome back this is the next uh, room and this is my younger son's bedroom and I use the windows to grow some of my most tropical and hard to care for plants but I got some good growing tips for you first off we have the philodendron heteraceum She's growing in this hanging pot here, which is a kind of a trash bin. It looks like a growing pot to me, and um, it uh, I use it as a cash pot. And then down here we have a trailing. It's growing really well for me, and next to it. We have the mother plant of this, of the pothos that you saw hanging. It's not trailing up a moss pole, but instead I have it twining around this um, trellising. And what has it done? It's become a very thick, thick luscious pothos this thing gets really thirsty it's so thick and luscious because I've twisted it around so many times as you can see there you can see up to 10 different stems I love it's this beautiful pothos I love it's bright green foliage ease of care A little bit of brown chip there. That was from the summer. Just gave the plant some stress. But during these times when it's getting cooler, got a warm day, cool nights, puts out new luscious growth. And I water it. I always use a little green green tea and white vinegar to bring the pH down because you want to keep your soil alive and working for the plant that's why next is a syngonium this is a beautiful pink variety it's got this beautiful new leaf that has come out it was struggling in the summertime it was just far too hot for it and if you're wondering why it's planted lopsided, it's because it had a friend, which is another syngonium, but it had, it had, uh, it had um, succumbed to rot. The summertime got the better of it, and it just couldn't, as a very small plant, it couldn't manage to grow. And once again, I got the sticky paper in there to catch fungus gnats it's been doing a good job just cutting little bits of it and eventually you can get rid of the problem that way next up is Burl Marks Calathea isn't that beautiful and why is it so beautiful and so lush The growing tips are very simple. Calatheas love to be slightly moist. In between water waterings, you let it sit on its tray, have up to a, a week to two weeks to drink up its water that it has in its soil but you never let it dry out too much so the first point is you look at the surface you can see that it's just starting to dry it's time to water it again and the watering is important I use ordinary tap water you 
you can do the best thing by keeping the cap off the two litre bottle of water so that all the chemicals dissipate and then what you want to do is you want to add white vinegar like I've been saying you're best to add the white vinegar before you water it's not going to be as effective if you just put the white vinegar into the water and you just leave it for a week and then use it it's better to put it in to take the pH down give that bottle a good shake and of course I use green tea green tea tea bags because they have magnesium zinc and calcium which are not found in a lot of fertilizers as you can see here the newest growth is absolutely perfect beautiful perfect the weather is much cooler now it got sun it got heat stress during our summer which temperatures nearly got to 40 degrees which is 105 Fahrenheit outdoors and this is the result of it and I know it is now because I have this new leaf to compare to this older leaf which was growing during the summer so never fear don't panic if your calathea has stress like this just move it to a area where it's not getting any direct sunlight it's just bright indirect light and it will come right it'll start growing for you again it's part of the plant's life cycle it can never be perfect you don't need to cut these leaves off they still do photosynthesis and help the plant to get bigger and stronger This is my oldest Calathea, Calathea Makoyana, which has a, it's a notorious, where it's hard to care for finicky behavior. However, I've never had that problem. I just use a average potting mix that's fluffy and light, and then I do the same as what I do for the bell marks. I never let it dry out completely. I keep it slightly moist, which means that I go along and I touch the top layer of soil when I feel it's quite dry and, the, and it's already been a week. I'll water it again. If it's much hotter and it dries out much quicker, then I'll water it some more. And I don't keep it in water. I drain the water out. And in the bottom of the pot, which I forgot to mention, I put big pumice stones. Before I pot my calathea up, so it gives all that extra oxygen, which is what roots really need. They need to have oxygen to breathe. You can see some damage here, that's from the summer. But then you have this magnificent new growth. These Calathea plants are in a east-facing window. They're just having the best life there. Next up is my favorite hanging succulent plant, which is the donkey's tail, Cedum uh, morganianum. It's a huge plant. It's very old. It's in here for winter, from spring all the way through summer. It hangs outside, not in direct sun, but it does get a little. It has to stay in here during the winter because it's frost tender, which means any amount of frost and this whole thing will just turn into mush. This is the living room and I'm going to take you on a tour through the living room. And I don't usually do the living room because everyone's living in the living room, which means it gets noisy in here. 
So you might hear some sounds in the background. That's my kids playing. So over here we have another Phalaenopsis. This is a Sakudan. It has beautiful small flowers, super fragrant, much more fragrant than even roses. And if I have to describe the smell or the fragrance, it's like, it's actually a whole lot like roses, very floral. Here is a small plant of a Hoya Kumingi, uh, Hoya uh, David Coming Eye, which puts out bursts of growth. One time I put it in a plastic bag to bring up the humidity, which helped it to um, spurt out some new growth. Here is another Hoya Sunrise, once again in the um, cash pot because I put a little water in there for it to drink. It's got these great long peduncles. Sometimes it drops them because of the seasons. You might get a bit of stress and do that. Next up is another plant that I grew from a cutting of my Matilda, Hoya Matilda that's growing here. So it's doing really well. I give it water about once or twice a week, which is just enough, keeps it happy. Next here is my Epiphyllum cactus. It has put out a lot of new growth, all of this, since having it in this west facing window, east facing, sorry. Um, that's the morning sun, gets the morning sun. I can see a uh, fungus net and I want to kill it. <laughs> Damn things. <laughs> Got it. That's why I have the um, sticky stuff up there. Uh, this plant enjoys water once a week, a little bit of water, not drown it. So it's just slightly moist. And I'm looking forward to the flowers it'll have in the back here in my jungle is a uh, um, Peperomia happy bean and it is a happy bean for, for sure so this growth is super tall and how do I look after it? it seems to like a position where it gets morning sun so there's one tip for peperomias the morning sun and I got this netting here so that it doesn't burn it but it gets bright morning sun watering uh, I water it a little so what I mean is when I water it I won't completely saturate it it'll just get a light watering every once a week it seems that whenever I water a peperomi and I completely soak it so the water's rushing out the bottom they seem to go into shock and I don't know why so I've stuck to this watering schedule and I've been doing much better these days next up is my mother plant of Hoya Bella you can't beat that this floral fragrance of the flowers it's been doing so much better now ever since I put it in the cash pot and I keep a little bit of water in it when the water get when the weather would get really really cold below 10 degrees and I mean that indoors 
then it's always a good idea to empty your cash pot and let it um, have a break from the water in the cash pot and empty it out and just let it have a few days before you put some more water back in. Um, usually it, it'll show stress by having some yellow leaves and they start dropping off that'll be two problems. Uh, number one is that it's getting too cold and it's still got water in its cash pot and it's not drinking it and it just needs a little oxygen and time to get oxygenated in the root system. Or number two is that um, it's just getting too hot and it's just heat stress. But during these cooler times, spring and autumn, it's starting to make flowers and flower buds. And I've been taking lots of cuttings off it and growing more. So this one is also one of my favorite Hoyas. I love it's how it grows down, down, down. I like jungle vines. Next up we have, um, we got two Phalaenopsis. This one and that one, that's Sakudan. That's a, a, a keiki that came off and I've been growing it and it actually flowered last year. And we got this Phalaenopsis too, which is really healthy, growing really well for me. There's beautiful flowers. If I do have the flowers, I'll put them on the screen for you. Here is Hoya Bella that I took cuttings from and it has been growing really well once again it's in a cash pot I put a little bit of water in finally is my big old specimen of Hoya David Kamingai that flowers nicely a few times a year um, during the winter it likes some water it also likes to be shocked, which means it likes to have the water cut off completely and shrivel. It get really shrivelly in the leaves, and then you give it a good old soaking in the springtime, and then it gets all lush again, and it'll just shoot out all this energy into the peduncles and make a whole splendor of flowers for you. So that's one growing tip about David Cumming Eye. It's a hoya that you shouldn't be afraid of underwatering during the winter, letting it get shrivelly. It won't harm it one bit, it'll actually do it some good. But however, you shouldn't do that to your hoya bella. One more plant before we go, and this one's in the kitchen. And this is my big specimen of a sense of area. And it's the common variegated variety. It's been around for forever. Maybe your grandmother or your mother used to grow this in their house. But I've always loved this sense of area, and it's one of my favorites. It's been growing so well. It's got super long leaves growing up. And it's in this uh, east facing window, which means it gets the morning sun. And it's in terracotta. So, you know what? If I do overwater it, it breathes. So, all the excess water will come out and you get some good amount of oxygen in the root system. One way that you can tell if your Sansevieria needs water or not is um, the new leaves will, will be too wavy instead of being nice and straight like that. They may come out wonky, like corrugated almost and 
this is a sign of underwatering. You can see, you can notice it by your new leaves will be growing and they'll be just not nice and straight and thick, but they may be flaccid and really wavy or unusual growth. And if your soil is really bone dry, you know that you've made a connection. It needs more water. And that's it. You know what? I'm so glad you could come along and see my house plants and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, a like, and um, tell your friends if they're interested in house plants, cacti, and succulents. And don't forget to subscribe so that um, uh, it'll let you know when I have a new video that'll come out. Anyway, once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.